want to control all of your media in one app, then I'm going to show you how you can control your TV, Apple TV, Plex Media Server, and your Sonos Play Bar. You can obviously control any device that you can integrate in the Home Assistant. Today, specifically, we'll be creating a Home Assistant dashboard for my iPhone that will transform this into this. For this video, I'm assuming that you already connected all of your devices in the Home Assistant because we'll be focusing just on the dashboard. If you're brand new to Home Assistant, warning, it's quite addictive. Once you start, you can't really stop. If you want to jumpstart your Home Assistant journey, if you're new, click the link in the description below for my free Home Assistant course. Well, big thanks for all of you that watched my previous video on dashboards and smashed that like button. We got over 300 likes. So really, really grateful for that result. So this video here, if we get same amount of likes again, if we get 300 likes, I'm gonna make another dashboarding video next month. Hey guys, if you're new here, I'm Gio from Smart Home Makers. This video will be split up in chapters. We're gonna look at the media cabinet input selector first. We'll create the shell of a dashboard. We're gonna look at the picture elements and creating some logos. We're then gonna be creating some scripts. We're gonna be using grid cards in the dashboard. We're gonna basically be connecting it all up. Towards the end of the video, we're also going to look at the look and feel of the dashboard, polish it a bit, and also going to give you help to how you can expand your dashboard going forward. Now let's get into the demo of how this works, but first, let's roll the intro. So the powerful thing about Home Assistant is that you can customize your dashboard in any way you want. So let me show you how I'm actually controlling this. So what I'm doing right now, I can backspace, so I can go back to my menu. So let me go back again, and I can go to the app. I'm using the Disney Plus app. I can go to the home button, and you can see that I can control my Apple TV as I wish. So I've got the simple arrows in the remote, so I can go left, I can go down, I can go up. So you can move quickly across the Apple TV as normal. The central button is to do a, the OK selection, and I've also got some shortcuts right here at the bottom to launch specific apps. So assume I want to launch Netflix, I'll just tap on the Netflix app and the Netflix app launches like that. So let me go back to the home and let me show you something else. So I can launch, for example, Plex by tapping on the Plex shortcut. And Plex will actually kick off. So you see it's moving across, it's clicking in without me touching anything. So the Plex app is up and running so now, for example, I want to watch uh, a movie. So let's pick any movie, for example. And I want to resume. And I can resume like this. So I pause the video, as you can see, because I don't want any uh, issues with copyright. But what you can do is you can actually change the volume here and you can put the volume up and down. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to a familiar YouTube channel right now and I'm going to sort of demonstrate this right now. So you can see now we've got YouTube up with my previous video on dashboarding. I can mute and unmute. And you can see my voice up, so I can put my voice up. I can lower it down and I can just pause it by pressing the pause button and it will stop playing as you can see. And I can just go back and what I can do is I can, for example, navigate on YouTube. I can go up and down, I can do what I want. This is sort of what we will be building today. I'm going to show you how we can do this. You can do this with Apple TV, but you can do it with any device that's connected up with remote in Home Assistant. Now I'm also going to show you at the end, you can tap on this button over here, which is the TV off button, and the TV goes off. One more thing to add is the lights. So I've also got control of the lights. So if I turn the lights on, I can uh, change the color, the brightness of my lights. So I've got control of my lights where I'm, I'm actually uh, controlling my media at the same time. I can just turn off my lights by tapping the light button just like that. So now let's jump into Home Assistant. Let me show you how we can build this together. If you have any questions at all, comment in the section down below and I'm gonna get back to you. The sooner you comment, the better it is because I tend to respond to comments as soon as the video gets released because I'm at my computer. But I will try and respond to the comments if you're watching this in the future. But just give me a few hours to get there. I'm also adding all of these information on my blog at leonardosmarthomemakers.com slash blog. And you can find that and you can open up the blog and you can follow up written instructions at the same time. I'm also copied and pasted the code out of all of, of everything that I'm doing here. So you can actually uh, reuse it easily without typing it out from the video. Now let's jump into Home Assistant.
First thing you need to do is we need to create an input selector. This input selector will be our media cabinet controller. So basically everything that you've got on HDMI connected to your TV. So this could be PlayStations, Roku's, Apple TVs or whatever you want. We'll be using this so that when we are given a remote control command, we know which device to actually control based on what is selected and what's playing. Click on configuration, go down, click on helpers, add helper, go to drop down, give it a name. Now with options, you're going to list out all of your devices. So this could be TV, Roku, Apple TV, and so on and so forth. So click on create and you've got your media cabinet too. Take note of the name that you've uh, been generated. So this entity ID name, we're going to need it later on. The one I created previously is this one here. So that's what I'm going to be using. You can also add a nice icon like this one over here if you want to have this symbol. So I'm going to be creating a new dashboard alongside the one I previously created, the one that I showed you in the demo. So go on your three dots, click on edit dashboard. You're going to have this little thing over here. Click on the plus sign and here you can create a new view. Call this whatever you want to call this. Uh, you can call this media cabinet, for example. Icon, you can give it like a cool icon, like something like this, film. And you click save. Now you should have it over here. So I have two because I have the previous one. You might just have only one, depending on what you have on your dashboard already. Now I'm going to explain to you the four components of this dashboard. The top part of the dashboard, it's going to have our media players. So there will be one media player for each different device that you have. In my example, I'm using an Apple TV and a Plex media player. But later on, I will expand this with uh, PlayStation 4s or any other media player that I have. So it's going to be the first section over here. And the third part of the section, this section over here, actually has my volume, which is the, the Sonos play bar. So I can actually control the volume of the output stuff over here. Now, the second part of the um, grid card is a, another grid card with four elements. We have four cards, one for each type of shortcut that you uh, want to you know, use. And you can use any shortcut that you want. I've uh, decided to use these because these are the apps that I use the most. Now, scrolling down, we have another grid card here. This grid card have, has nine elements and it's on three rows. So one, two, three, three, nine, right? And each one of these elements is a button and these buttons do specific things. For example, this does turns the TV on, this goes arrow up, lights on and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The last part is just a media cabinet controller. And here, if you toggle this uh, input selector, you're able to switch HDMI signal if you've got that configured to use different things. I've just got that here as a placeholder for now, as this doesn't do anything because um, we haven't got there adding multiple HDMIs yet. Before we created the empty shell with this film dashboard over here, now let's start adding stuff into it. Click add card. Now search for grid card. Turn renders cards as square off and put columns as one. Now we're gonna to need to add a few grid cards. So add a grid card. Press this plus button over here. Go to grid card again. Again, plus button, grid card. The last one is going to be an entity card. So we just go entities and we can actually do this quite quickly because this is just my input selector. So go here, an entity, go for input and you should find your media cabinet. So let's save this for now. And you can see we've just got an empty uh, block, but we've got the end part already done. Let's set the actual correct number of columns. So we're going to be needing one column over here. We'll be having four columns, four columns on the second card. On the third card, we're going to have, we're going to have three columns because that's the three by three setting that we have. Now let's go on the first one. So I'm going to start with the picture element. So we'll be doing those logos, as you remember. So we have four columns over here and we'll be searching cards. So the card that we can search is called picture. So you can see here, there's an example of this guy with a t-shirt with home assistant. So you can tap on this, let me show you better. So you can see it over here. I'm just adding in some pictures. Here we get four. Keep on going. 
So we've got four elements over here. Now let's untick render cards as square. So they've taken that white bit off and save it. So now we've got these four images. For the logos, you can go to a tool called canva.com. So what I did was I just found some images of the internet of these uh, apps and these brands and what, and you just created like a five, 500 by 500 uh, image. So they need to be all the same. So they look quite good with Home Assistant. You can change the dimensions depending on what device you're going to be using this. And you just drag them in and yeah, just go right click. It's fine, detaching image, just go right click, set image as background. And then you've got them all set up. And then you just download the files. These will download to a folder on your local computer. And what you do is you can go to something like the file editor to actually upload these files in. So you can go to the www folder if you haven't got it created. And yeah, just go over here, click on this up button, upload, look for the files and just upload them over here. Now take note of the actual names of the files. So you can see this is the file that I created, 500 by 500 pixels. Yeah, so just keep note of the files because we're going to be needing it. Uh, later on. So let's go back into the dashboard. Now we're back in here, click edit and let's go and change those cards. The image path, instead of this demo home assistant path, we'll be deleting this and we're going to do slash local slash and then we're going to put the name of the file. So my example Disney plus dot PNG and you can see we've got it populated now, right? So that's all good. So what you'll do is you'll continue um, adding them all in until you've got this up and running, right? So you've got the second one. What I'll do is I'll just copy this. I'll paste it over here and then just change this to whatever it is. So uh, my example, Plex. And just continue copying and pasting, changing it all up. And you can actually populate it in that way. At the moment, these cards are not going to do anything. We haven't got to that yet. But uh, let's save it. Let's continue with the dashboard shell. So let's go to grid color element number three. We've got three columns you remember. Now we need to add in a quite a lot of buttons. We actually need nine buttons. So uh, it's going to take us a little bit of time to do it, but it, you will, it will look good. So once you've done the fourth button, like this one over here, you should see it going over here. If, you, if this garden life, for example, whatever you have as your default, comes up the fourth column, then you know you've got this wrong, right? So remember to have this as columns as three. So if you have it columns four, it will just put it in line that way. So that's really up to you how you want to design it. Take the render square, uh, cards of square off, and you've got this uh, like this. Now a few little tricks that you can do. First thing, you can remove the name. So take the name off, and you can see it blanks out the name. Now imagine that we want this to be arrow um, left, right? So we can go at MDI arrow left. And then we've got the symbol arrow left. Okay. So in the blog, or I should add that in, if it's not in already, you'll see all of the MDI that I'm using. If not, you can go to material design icons.com and you can find out arrows and anything that you want to use yourself to customize it. So yeah, that's what I would do. The first one, I, if you remember, it's the uh, TV. So this is the Samsung TV. Switch dot wake on LAN is my Samsung TV. So let's turn that off. And I'm going to change this MDI to television. There you go. So now that looks a lot like what we have in our original dashboard. So I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to create another nine and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I've added the other nine buttons and you can see now how this is taking shape. So let me get out of edit mode so you can see this better. So we've got the four elements over here. I haven't done this one. We've got the nine elements and we've got the last element over here. So if you look at this, it's pretty much matches. The only thing you need to change is your, you know, is the, um, the MDIs, like as I showed you earlier. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding this part over here, which could be the conditional element. Let's edit again. Right, so with tab number one, what we're going to be doing specifically now, so we're going to search for a card called conditional card. We never used a conditional card before. It will be um, quite, it's quite straightforward to use, but uh, it's a little bit more complex than the other cards. So once you've clicked on the conditional card, you have two little tabs, conditions and cards. 
The condition is what you actually want it to do. When do you want it to display? And the card will be what do you want it to display? Okay, so I start with the card. The card that I'm using is the custom mini media player. Now this card, you can use it and you can get it from the Home Assistant community store called Hacks. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna leave a link to a, another video here and you can go and check that out. But that's a, quite a powerful store to have. So I'm adding this card and I'm gonna do entities and I'm gonna add Apple TV living room. And you can see we've got it up here. Conditions at the moment, it's blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna search for the Apple TV and I'm gonna set the state to something. So let's say we want to set it to idle. And we have the current state is what is uh, over here. So we say state is equal to idle. You can do the opposite and say the state is not equal to idle. You can add also multiple conditions, but remember that all of them need to be fulfilled for the card to show. So now we have a nice card over here um, shown as such. I'm gonna take the render card and square it off. So now it all compacts and it's, it's coming all together, right? The second element that we're gonna be adding is another conditional card. Now this conditional card will be pretty much similar to the one before, but what we'll be doing we're going to be using the custom media player, mini media player. But this time I'm using another device, not the Apple TV. I'll be using my Plex for Apple TV. So it's the Plex that runs on Apple TV. And you can see that says that's unavailable because it's not currently running. So if I go to conditions and I go to Plex for Apple TV living room, and we add the state to playing. Okay, so as you can see now that actually that's actually gone because the current state is unavailable. So now that's done, we can save it. And if we close this, edit UI, we have a UI that looks something like what we have over here, but not quite such. So let me show you actually the few things that I have done on my side to actually uh, show you. So this is the status that I'm using. So I'm saying the state is not equal to idle to show the Apple TV card. I've also got the third card over here, which is the state is not equal to idle, right? So that's the opposite, but I'm also checking for the uh, Plex for Apple TV, and that has to be idle. So what that means is that if none of the two are playing, the whole card disappears. So it keeps it nice and neat. So as soon as you actually uh, turn, the, turn the TV on or turn something on, then the media player will appear and you can actually control your media. So the media card will disappear when there's no media to be played. The third element that I'm using is the card here for my Sonos. So I have my media player dot lounge and that's the Sonos speaker that I'm using. And that also only appears when the state is equal to playing. Okay, so that will give us a nice uh, little bar, the bar that we saw. So let me just at the moment just turn this uh, on. So as you can see from here, we have, I actually started a, a movie. So we've got this little play button. And if the play button goes continues, we've got the pause button over here. And now you can see the volume bar is actually controllable. We can mute, unmute, and we can move the volume as we wish. So as soon as I pause it, and you can see the volume actually disappeared and I unpause and the volume goes back up. So that's sort of how this is configured in this way. And I'm actually, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually customize this and how customize it to look, is to actually go and create all of the scripts behind the scenes to make these buttons actually come alive and work. If you wanna learn more about dashboards and all of my secrets, then check the link in the description below and you can see the dashboards in Home Assistant course. And the first 10 people that I enroll for the course, I'm giving you out a 50% discount for anyone that's actually watching this video here. So go and grab that deal and get yourself pre-ordered so you can actually get this as soon as this hits and you can watch it. So what we'll be doing in the course, I'll be using a five tablet and configuring it in kiosk mode. We'll be looking at home assistant cards, we'll be looking at custom cards, themes, and videos like this where we take some example and we try and build out a dashboard.
altogether. If you're actually not sure about this and you want to try it out, there's a seven day free trial and you get access to all of my courses. And this dashboarding course will also be part of that trial. So you can see if this works out for you. If it doesn't, you can cancel in seven days. If not, you'll be a member of the community. Now let's jump back into the video. Let's look at the scripts. The first script of today is a remote command script. This script is going to send the command to the right device based on whatever you selected in your input selector. A few things to change if you're copying and pasting this code is the input select media cabinet and you're going to need to use whatever you've called your um, input selector. I'm sending a command, as you can see, to my Apple TV. So that's a specific entity ID and I'm using this data command. So actually it'll be more clearer when we give you an example. So an example of a command, for example, is up, down, arrow, uh, you know, left, right, okay, back, whatever. This gives you an idea. What, we, what I'm doing specifically here, I'm doing a choose and I'm doing a condition. So when this, this media cabinet is at state Apple TV, then it will run the sequence. In the future, when I'm going to be adding more conditions, so if I can add another condition here, for example, for PlayStation 4 or Xbox or anything, and I'll be using different remotes for that. So in that way, the remote in the dashboard will continue working. And let's look at some examples of how we can use this. So in the remote arrow up example, I'm using the remote command script. So I'm calling this script that I created over here. So what I'm doing is I'm passing a command up and same thing for down, I'm passing down. We've got right, left, top menu, menu, select, wake up, menu. And yeah, basically this completes the list. So feel free to copy and paste this code. There's going to be a link down in the uh, video for the blog where you have all of the code. And you just copy and paste it. This you can actually uh, keep as is if you're using an Apple TV. If you're using a different device, you can only check the um, system documentation for the actual command itself. Now we're going to look at the scripts that are behind those logos that we are using to select our favorite app. So let's start with the Disney app. The Disney app, as you can see, is descriptive by this script over here. And what we're doing basically is we are using the command function with the remote control and we're using a series of commands. So for Disney, we're doing top menu, home, and then select. So for Apple TV, this is a workaround and you always sort of need to do top menu, home first. And then depending on when you put the logo in the Apple TV app itself, uh, you either put select, you put left, right, up, down. So as you can see, for example, let's look at the Netflix example. If we start with top menu home and then right and select. Plex is uh, on the right hand side of Netflix. So we need two rights and one select. And Apple Fitness is on the same line, but just one more. So three rights and one select. So this, these will be delayed 1.5 seconds. You can change this delay setting so it looks a little bit smoother. And at the end of this, I'm updating my input select media cabinet to Apple TV. And I'm doing the same thing for everything else apart from when I'm using Plex where the uh, option is selected as Plex. So we're back to the dashboard now. We've got all of our scripts. We've got the shell. We've got everything ready to go. So your dashboard should, should look something like this or a lot better than what this looks. So I'm going to actually show you what you need, what we need to do now to put all the scripts into the dashboard and we need it there. So it's gone three dots, edit dashboard, scroll down, click on edit. Yeah. And let's go to the third grid card. You remember we have all of the nine uh, things to change. So I'll give you an example. So go to the second one, which should be the remote arrow up and just change the entity ID of whatever you had uh, as a default and just search for the script name. Now, if you're copying and pasting from the blog, it'll be exactly the same. And do the same thing. So go to the third one. I'm adding, for example, the lights to control in the uh, living room. And the fourth one is arrow left. Fifth one is remote select. Sixth, we have arrow right. Seventh is menu, eighth arrow down and nine home. So we can get that all sorted. Some of these actually have, uh, yeah, they all have the logos, right? So you have MDI home over here, arrow down, 
menu, or a right square rounded, or a left light bulb group, or up and television. So those are the uh, little cards you need. Go back, let's look at those uh, shortcuts, those apps. So you remember that we had them, we had the little PNG files, Netflix, Disney, Plex, and Apple Fitness. What you'll need to do is you need to change the tab action from call service. Uh, I think it's the toggle, defaults to toggle, just go to call service, do the same for the holder action, just in case, and just find the right script. So my one is Apple TV Fitness, Apple TV Fitness, for Apple TV Fitness, you know, Plex, will be Plex, Plex, and you just continue like that until you've got it all set up. So once you've got all of that set up, click on close, and you've got that done. Now in this last part of the video, we're going to be looking at setting up the custom media player with some uh, cool uh, configurations. So let's go edit. Remember the first grid card has all of our cards. We have three conditional cards. So let's look at the first one. Go to card and let me show you the settings that I have. So what I'm turning on, I'm turning on group cards. I have the artwork set to full dash cover. I haven't done anything else at this stage on this, but I'm, I'm changing some of the code. So go click on show code editor. And what you'll need to add is something called hide. So you need to type in basically hide and then colon. And then over here you will do two spaces and you'll add everything in. So you go like volume, and then true, and, and you will continue like that. You should see it over here is that I'm actually um, taking things off to make it look neat. So if I, for example, put volume false, you can see that now I have a volume controller at the top also, but I don't want that because I'm using my Apple TV. Uh, sorry, I'm using my Sonar, so I want to say this is true. So I want to hide that. Same for the power. I can have the power available here, like this power button, but I don't like it because I've got the power off down in the TV. So you're basically able to hide things as you wish. Then the same thing with the Plex card. Um, but the third card, I'm doing, um, taking it to another level. What I'm doing with the third card is actually nearly hiding nearly everything. So the third card actually looks like it's just a Sonos media player. So you can see I've got the name, icon info power. I've got it all set up like this. I've got my entity ID. So those are the little final touches that you can add. Um, I'm going to add all of this code to the blog. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to give this a like, subscribe to the channel for the next dashboarding video. But if you want to keep on watching here on YouTube, click on this next video to watch how I've built two dashboards, one for my iPad and one for my iPhone. In that video, you're going to learn a lot more about dashboarding. It's going to be on a similar theme like the one we've just done now. So subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the course if you're interested in learning more about dashboarding in a structured way without any ads. This was Drew from Smart Home Makers and see you in the next one.